Let's go ahead and do procedure A, method two, measuring the pH versus time with dark roasted coffee using a coffee maker. First thing you wanna get is you wanna get the uh, darkest roasted beans possible. I've got some beans that I've roasted, uh, not in the popcorn popper on my own separate roaster uh, because the popcorn popper won't do beans that are dark enough. Get 600 milliliters of room temperature water. I've got 900 milliliters here actually, in case I need a little extra. Uh, record the pH of the water. So we've got my pH tester here. And my water today after five or 10 seconds. Seven point five. Sort of going down with time, so stir it again. See if we can get a consistent reading there. Yep, 7.05, that's gonna be our pH. Turn that off. Write that down. Coffee type is gonna be my classic Ethiopia Sadama Karamo. My mass of beans, well, it asks for 25 grams of beans. So I got a little beaker here. I've got my scale. And I got my beans. I'm gonna tear the scale, meaning set it to zero with the beaker on it and measure out 25 grams of beans as a starting point. Twenty four point five, And the exact amount, not super important. What is important is that you know how much you have and not even at this part because we're just getting 25 grams. We're gonna grind them up for about 10 seconds. And it does say, write down your grind time. Oh, write down my, oh, I don't use my mass of beans yet. It's just my mass of beans this part. I should be mixing that. I always forget that part because I'm trying to count. And I'll just take a look at those beans. They're pretty finely ground. Now, uh, time to brew the coffee. Center, uh, oh, then time to write down that I did 10 seconds of grinding. All right, so now comes what might be the tricky part. Is I'm going to put the coffee maker on my scale. My coffee maker has a round bottom. And I'm going to put the cord on top of it so that, because uh, otherwise, well, let's see what happens. Yeah, it changes mass quite a bit. And I get 1790.0, which is the mass of just the coffee maker. I don't need that mass, but I'm gonna write it down anyway. Coffee maker empty. Because sometimes things go wrong and I just wanna have that mass. All right, and that has the filter in it already. So I'm gonna put my coffee in. Twenty-five grams, approximately. I'm gonna fold it back up, put the cord back on, and it now reads one thousand eight hundred fourteen point nine. Forgot to tear it in between, so it is a good thing I wrote that down. So one thousand eight hundred fourteen point nine grams 
And uh, if I subtract those two, I actually get 24.9 grams of coffee. Um, let me just double check that. 18, 14.9 minus 1790. Yep, 24.9. So we may have lost a tenth of a gram in there. Now I want, so now I am going to tear it. There. Now I'm going to put in 600 grams of water and make sure this thing does not fall off or spill water on my computer. Oh, that changes the weight of everything. So let's see, add about 900 grams or 900 milliliters. Let's see how much we got there. Okay, it is staying there, but it looks like I only have 563.5 grams. Not use that water. We're gonna go with it. It says 595.8. That will be good enough. All right, and so now I'm gonna take it off the scale. I'm gonna plug it in and we'll start making coffee. Good. And uh, I do have my thermocouple here. Turn that on because I'm gonna take the temperature of the water, uh, do my best to take the temperature of my water as it comes out of the little spigot right here. Normally, if I was making coffee with Mr. Coffee Maker, I would have a spoon and I would be making sure that all the coffee grounds were wet before the water get, went through, but we're not gonna do any of that stuff today. We're just gonna let it happen. Looks like room temperature is about 23 in here today. Water's coming through, so not a lot though. It kind of spurts through, so we'll see how good we are at doing this. We'll see right up there. Bring it up to 86. Pretty fast, thank you. Let's see if I can curl it up there. Get right under there. 88, it's coming out of there. I saw a 91. And for this one, basically the highest temperature you can see is what you want to record. Let's see a 93, 92, 94. 93, 94, it's pretty good temperature. I only saw 94 for a second, so I'm going to say 93, 94 degrees Celsius. So that's a good temperature to make coffee. We're going to wait for it to brew the coffee, and then we're going to continue uh, taking samples. I've got my pipette right here. I've got a 50 milliliter beaker right here, so that as soon as it's done brewing, I can take my sample. Then I'm going to wait five minutes to measure the pH. And uh, basically, I'm going to have my timer my phone here, and as soon as it's done brewing, take a sample. That's my zero minute sample. I'm gonna wait five minutes to actually test it. Then I'm gonna wait five more minutes for a total of 10 minutes to take my next sample. And then five, so it's basically five minutes, every five minutes you do something. So you gotta stay close to your experiment, close to your pH meter, uh, but in between, as long as you've got timers set, there is free time here to do other things. Um, and that's what I'm doing. 